Chicago, what do you say? This is the CHGO Cubs podcast. Presented by Blue Moon, made brighter, get Blue Moon delivered, and see delivery options by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash CHGO. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Golden. I don't know why I paused there before I read all that. I think I just kind of had a brain fart for a second, but I made it. We made it. Happy Thursday, Cody Del Mendo, Ryan Herrera, and another remote Luke Stuckmeyer. He in the box. He, he's in the box. He's fitting his head in there. He just Barely. looks so happy. It's, ego. <laughs> it's not easy. They had to expand it. <laughs> um. Anyway, hit the like button, guys. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, and uh, want to give a shout out to the new diehards today because again Luke says this all the time so I'm just going to try to say this the best way that Luke does it like we are we are the most popular thing in the city right now yeah uh yeah. credit to us and that's why new diehards keep coming in 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 numbers not just one not just two Droves. but multiple people every day becoming new diehards credit to all of them love you all don't want to uh, have that FOMO if you're not there exactly uh so shout out to Jack Ryan Rob and Brian, Ryan and Brian, wow. Jack, Jack Ooh. Ryan, Rob Jack Ryan. Ryan, love it. Yeah. Good show. Yeah. Jim yeah. from the office. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Um, let's see. Godfather. I see you. Fernando, Alex, Chris, DFW, Susie. Uh, she says, if I don't want to hit the like button, Co- what if I don't want to hit the like button, Cody? Uh, well, Susie nice. counterpoint. <laughs> You should, because I said so, okay? Uh, anyway, we got Matt Shaw on the show later today. It'll be after Luke goes away. He's going to be on here for the first segment with us. Credit to him for coming on once again remotely. Um, but So stick around for that. But obviously, some we got some news to talk about related to some injuries. Uh, the Cubs spring breakout roster came out this morning. Uh, I believe I tweeted it from CHGO Cubs account before any other Cubs account did out there. Credit to me. Uh, and, yeah, so I think we should start with the big thing. I think oh, a lot of people are talking about today was Caleb Killian's shoulder injury. Yeah. Um, just a really brutal story, honestly, just because he had been pitching so well um, in the spring. Uh, yeah. I, I can't say that. I can't say that I had high expectations because he hasn't given me a reason to have high expectations over the last couple of years, but it was encouraging to see him perform the way he had this spring. And now he's not going to pitch until the all-star break yeah, at the like earliest. Expectations, something like that. Yeah. So I don't know, Luke, how you feeling, man? Like what do what, what, uh, what, what's your, your off, take on this? I've never heard of a terrorist major strain. I didn't even know what that was, but apparently it's better than, you know, torn rotator cuff or whatever else might be the possibility for it. I feel bad for him personally. I think, you know, it's real easy to get caught up in the fan thing like we do, all all Cubs fans and all baseball fans, and get disappointed in guys when they don't get to a certain level that we hope they do or they don't perform in a certain moment when we hope they would. Um, but I think this is one of those moments where you can sit – I think anybody can sit back and, and should look at it and say, man, I feel bad for him. He's dedicated his whole life to this, and just when he feels like maybe he's inching back to that opportunity that he deserves, it's taken away from him for a while. Now, it's good news that it's it's not over for the whole season. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you can still count on him as some sort of depth, yeah, but it's Angelina. disappointing because his spring had been good. And I saw the uh, the quote from Craig Council saying just that, like he should be proud of what he was doing. But you know that also makes it even more bittersweet. Yeah, no, I, um, you know, so I, I have the, uh, quote, sorry, Sarah, Sarah distracted me with the wrong quote. Well, sorry. The quote up there. That's, that's <laughs> not related to Caleb Killian, but sorry. it's okay. It's yeah, okay. She's only human. She is. Only um, human. all right. No, but yeah, this is from Jordan Bastion of, uh, Cubs.com. Craig council talking about Caleb Killian. I think Caleb was off to a great start talking to him. He should be very confident of where he was. And that should really help him over the next couple months here and motivate him. He should be really excited about how he was throwing the baseball. There was a lot to like, and he certainly got my attention. I know that. And, yeah, like it was what – it was his 
third third outing of the year when he came out of the game the other day. Sure. Um, and this is what we talked about yesterday. Like it was just a couple of years where once he got that first call up, it just he wasn't the same. Like it, it looked like maybe he was uncomfortable um, at, in the major league level, and he goes back down to Triple A and just didn't have the same success that he had prior to the prior to getting called up. But and you know spring training is is one thing like we talk about like Hayden Wisniewski last year had an awesome spring training and then he got to the season and pretty quickly like issues started to emerge so not that um i for me three games from Caleb Killian tells me like he's back like i think there was there was definitely more that i needed to see to show that okay he's starting to look back like the pitcher that he was a couple of years ago that made him so um you know such a highly anticipated debut eventually um but to hear Craig Council say, like, this guy got my attention. This guy was doing really well and should be proud of it. Like, the fact that he got the attention of a brand-new manager um, who's who's just trying to learn everyone at, in the organization at this point, um, mm-hmm. to, to be to, for the manager to say, like, this guy got my attention during spring, like, that's a that tells you that not even just the games but um, the in-between stuff, whether that was maybe live BPs or bullpens or whatever, like, there was something that he was doing that – Craig Council really likes. So it, it, it does hurt for sure. It does hurt um, not only just the starting pitching depth wherever he was uh, on that depth chart for, for starters, but just it, it hurts. It definitely hurts him as a guy that was less than a couple of years ago when you know, he came to the Cubs and was immediately one of their higher ranked prospects. And now he's just kind of fell off the radar um, after some struggles. So yeah, it just all around sucks for the guy because um, he's still pretty young and yeah. has a chance to in some way, um, impact, or had a chance in some way to impact the big league team, you know, maybe even early in the season. Now you're definitely pushing that back towards the end of the season if he is able to impact the team at all this year. Yeah. Uh, our guy Rich Beasterfield in the chat says Killian looked to be back in the form he had in the 2022 Arizona Fall League when he was dominating in the championship game. And I remember that game. Like, yeah. He threw like six perfect innings. I remember, like, I just, I was all in on the hype. I mean, he would. At that time, I was clamoring for anything to be excited about with this organization. But, um, yeah, it just, it's been a very – his time with the, in the Cubs organization has just been very deflating at times because he had that great – like he had that performance I just read from Rich about in the Arizona Fall League um, and then went into like his major league debut against the Cardinals and – had a great outing and then fell apart there. And yeah. it basically been Pittsburgh was the next start he had maybe yeah. in Pittsburgh and, and got kind of lit up there. Right. And then just kind of struggled the rest of that time. And then last season he, what made like two appearances, maybe I think he had one start. He had the start in Miami, I want to yeah. say, and then had and two more good. outings later in the year that just yeah. weren't. Yeah. There was nothing yeah. there. And so to see what, again, it was what three outings you said in the spring, and again, I don't buy into like everything when it comes to spring training results. But he was someone that I have said that, you know, you want to see the confidence. You want to see the results for someone like him because he's he's battling for his like baseball career, man. Like it's not like he's some top prospect. It's not like he's, uh, you know, 21, 22 years old. He is still young, but like. Yeah, he's like, but he's 26 going on 27, right. so he's getting right. Yeah. To, so he's, yeah. like, at a point where it's, like, it's time to put up or shut up, you know what I mean? And, like, now this injury sets him back, and I can't blame him for that. Like, that's just what it is. And, like, I'm just – I feel bad for him, but it's also just, like, a frustration thing for me, too. Like, today I tweeted – and this this is – a lot of people took it the wrong way, but I tweeted about, like, how, you know, the Chris Bryant trade. He was part of the Chris Bryant trade. I was – I tweeted that, you know – in hindsight and everything, like, yes, the Cubs probably still with, or have won this trade because Chris Bryant's not on the Giants, and he's gone on to be injury-prone in the, throughout since he left the Cubs. But, like, what have the Cubs really gotten out of Caleb Killian and Alexander Canario? At this point, we're still just sitting here thinking about potential, and it's been over two years. And so I'm, I'm like – exhausted from the the whole like potential thing from them it doesn't mean that I'm giving up on them it doesn't mean that like I'm out on them I'm just this Killian thing is just another setback for like for this conversation like I want to know if these guys are going to be major league contributors for this team one day and it's like for at least for Killian I 
didn't have high expectations coming in this year anyway, but now it's like, now you got to wait till all-star break. And when he comes back, will he even get an opportunity? I don't know if he's going to, it depends on where the Cubs are at. You know yeah. what I mean? In Canario, it's like, well, he was out all of last year, basically. You know, I think, I think you're exhausted because you, there's like no one to blame. I think that's I would like to blame someone. <laughs> yes. I think that's because it's like just two guys that have been affected by, I mean, like obviously Killian had his struggles, right? Yeah. After making his debut, but like. Now you're talking about him missing a few months of the season, to, you know, maybe until the All Star break or whatever. You know, Canario misses so much time because of his injury. Like, <laughs> there's just no one to blame but Mother Nature at that point. Yeah. I, th I think maybe when you're talking about you being exhausted, maybe that's part of it. You know, it probably is a rebuild. A rebuild is brutal. Yeah. yeah, it's it's brutal. We've sat here and gone through it for two seasons. We've watched it, right? Like, yeah. it's brutal on the front office because their decisions don't always work out. It's brutal on the players who don't always get to the level that you hope they would. But most of all, it's brutal on us. It's brutal on the fans. Think how, like Cody said, think how excited we were when Caleb Killian made that first start. People were like, he looks like Mark Pryor. My God, look at him. He looks like Pryor out there. Yeah. You would hope when you trade Chris Bryant, and I'm not saying it wasn't the right time. It was the right time, obviously. But of all the guys you trade, you would hope Chris Bryant's going to get you back to prime prospects. It just doesn't always work out. Yeah. Well, and that's that's why was, you can't right? just trade one of those guys. That's why you can't just say, well, we'll rebuild the farm system. We'll trade this guy, and we'll get three great prospects. All three prospects might be nothing. Yeah. Well, It, doesn't, that, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and that's the, and, that's the problem. Like when Killian was, I think, a top five prospect in the system like the whole yeah. next year, um, Canario was up there as well, maybe like seven or eight. So, like yeah. – these are two guys that immediately become the top end of your system. And at, again, at the time was a system that was starting to come back up. So like the, the package or the return, especially when you're talking about giving up, you know, two months of a guy, right? you're not giving, you're sure. not giving a team two years of club control. You're giving them two months uh, for a team that's trying to go, you know, go all in for that season. Um, so you're not, especially when it was right, maybe 10 years ago, you might get more, but 2021, it was not, just wasn't what it was anymore. Um, so the, the, the package that you got back, you're like, okay, that's a pretty good package. You get, you're getting two guys that immediately slot in and the upper tier of our, you know, if you're, if you're the Cubs, you're saying that like an upper tier of our farm system and a couple of positions of need, like, okay, we can, we can live with this. And obviously, but that's what, that's what you're talking about is just that when it happens, you look at it like, okay, like th this looks good on paper, a couple really good prospects, like whatever, but then they have to go out and do it, whether that's mm -hmm. on them succeeding or struggling or getting hurt or whatever. Um, but that, yeah, that's the that's the issue with training for prospects. It's just like you don't you don't always know what you're going to get because these guys have never touched a major league field. Yeah. Well, am I missing somebody? Like it, it, we're, we're waiting on PCA, but as anybody that the, that the core was traded away for so far, none of those guys have really impacted the major league roster yet. No, no. a couple guys are so close. Not, I mean, if it's Contra? possible they won't. It's yeah. possible it's for possible sure. None of them will. The the only guy that if you and if you consider all the trades that were made at that time, the only guy that has a, somewhat helped this team win games is Daniel Palencia, who came back for Andrew Chafin. Nick Madrigal. Ooh. And Nick Madrigal, sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Speak. no, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, it's just I think, but also you have to think about the fact that a lot of those guys were teenagers when they traded, like sure. yeah. low A, high A prospects. Like you knew it was going to be a couple of years, so I think you you have to like still think about it in that kind of context. But um, no, I get what you're saying that it's just like you're you're sitting here going on three years later, and and you're not getting, mm -hmm. you still haven't gotten real impact from most of those guys. Like mm -hmm. Owen Casey yep. could be up this year; he could force the issue and. Um, you know, maybe make may, maybe impact the team later on in the season, right? PCA, we don't know how long he may be down if he doesn't start the season on the opening day roster. Um, but even at that point, like they're definitely hoping he starts to, you know, the improvements start to happen pretty quickly. Um, and like Kevin Alcantara, I I doubt we'll see him this year unless something yeah. crazy happens. So yeah, I get what you guys are saying that you're still kind of waiting on some of these guys. Like, okay, when are they gonna? You know, this when are these other guys the ones that you got back gonna actually? be the ones sure. impacting the roster. Uh, speaking of Nick Madrigal, we got an Ooh. update on him today, too. Uh, it was confirmed, the MRI confirmed a hamstring strain. Gary in the chat wants you to admit yeah. that he was that he, that he he was hurt. Yeah, I don't understand that because I don't, never said that he wasn't. 
Yeah. I was literally just like basically <laughs> reading what is coming out of Arizona. So I don't know what. Gary just keeps getting on me talking yeah. about like he likes to get on everyone. They get on me when you. he like wants to like be right. Yeah, but like you're not right because I wasn't never saying that he wasn't yeah. injured or hurt. Water. Like, well, it's Slaughter. like he, <laughs> Jake Slaughter. Yeah, I mean Gary Slaughter. will be right one day maybe. Yeah, um, with that, but no, like I I was just reading and re like bringing on what is coming out of Arizona about Madrigal and basically just <laughs> providing the updates that are coming out from Arizona. Mm-hmm. So like what yesterday it was. Um, got an MRI, but still feel good about it. Today, it's the MRI revealed the hamstring strain, but current counsel is still saying sure. um, optimistic about it. So, like, I'm just going off of what, yeah. I was what, gonna, has, been, what has come out from Arizona. I was going to add that counsel's saying that he's optimistic still. To me, sh- to me shows that they're just being very careful with it. And, like, it's spring training. They can do that. I, I don't know if they, things would be different if, you know, the games mattered right now. But, um it's kind of a big deal considering a lot of this third base talk we've had the last couple of days. So, um, well, and, and I saw a picture that, uh, uh, Chags, Scotty Chags from mm-hmm. Marquee tweet. He tweeted a picture of magical, like playing catch. Yeah, today. playing so, catch. So. so he's out there like doing something. I, I he's not completely shut down from baseball yeah, activities, but right. like, I, I think in the, in a sense that it was a right hamstring, right? Mm-hmm. Like Luke, we talked to him at Cubs convention. You remember this? He was talking about That's like the hamstring, good. Feeling good, feeling as good as it's been for years, like get, being mm-hmm. being able to get out of bed without a little like twinge of pain. Like he was saying, how like the hamstring was feeling as good as it felt since the the injury, and now it's another little strain or whatever. He you know he's, he's it's been a couple of them the last couple of years now, um, so it, it does feel like as far as that injury, it's a little on the injury prone side. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that at Cubs convention. I remember thinking when he was talking about, it, it's like, yeah, finally, I don't I don't have to think about it. And I thought to myself, wow, a whole off season. But really that thought process is still trying to get that out of his head. Like it's, it's okay. It's, it's healthy. I, f- I finally feel healthy. So, you know, mentally this has got to screw with him a little bit, right? Yeah, like yeah. there's no question that when he comes back from this, he can't be nearly as confident as he was going into the off season. It's just got to play with his head a little bit. Yeah. No, it sucks. But yeah, because I think exact that exact reason what you're talking about, like, that he really thought that it was yeah. like as healthy as it's been, um, you know, as close to healed as it's been, maybe. And then this happens, and you're like, okay, like, like if you're in his, if if you're him, you're probably thinking like, what did I do wrong? Like, well, how did I take the wrong? Like, what was, what did I do wrong? Because I felt so good coming right. into the season, the over, you know, over the off season. So now, yeah, now I agree. Like, you you probably in your own head about like, what now? What do I need to do? Like I thought I was in as good a place as I've been in a few years. Now what do I need to do because of that, you know, because it happened again. And it's Maybe not, you know, it. it's not a tear. It's it's obviously a, a, right. strain. a strain and and it's a, a, I think mild is how it was described and like we said he's doing some baseball activity at least it looked like so um n- not exactly sure if this is going to stop him from playing on opening day but um no, I just it, the the in general, having another one of the same injuries after, again, after thinking that you were in a great spot health wise, it's going to, for me, I know for me, it would, it would kind of play with my head as far as like, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do now? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like apples to apples comparison. It's like me with this cold. Every time I think I'm going to stop coughing, <laughs> it keeps coming back. Basically, Madrigal just needs to get into a bubble like I did. There you go. <laughs> Living in a uh, bubble. There you go. Yeah, that. I mean, I said like a week ago after all these pitching injuries around the league start happening, whether it was Kodai yeah. Senga, Son- Sonny Gray, uh, Lucas Giolito, I said that the Cubs need to start wrapping all their players in bubble wrap, bro. Yeah. Like just, just straight up wrap them all up until opening day. Um, I guess the good news is uh, Ian Happ. I mean, we kind of mentioned it whether it was yesterday or the day before that he was taking, like, batting practice, live BP in the backfields. Uh, I was reading Tony Andraki's uh, notes today, and Hap talked, and he said uh, that things feel good, um, you know, feels good and, and, and healthy, and he said there's plenty of time to get to opening day. Uh, and he says the experience of having a couple of shortened yeah. spring trainings is good for him, uh, so he's just kind of working off that. So – I think if there's any good news on the injury front, it's that 
Ian Happ is not nearly as serious as maybe someone like me may have been a little scared about a week ago, you know, big of me to say. All right. So yeah, take some solace in that. Cause I, again, I think Ian Happ is a big part of this team in 2024. If they're going to make the playoffs, I think he should be leading off opening day and, uh, with Bellinger right behind him. So, uh, I, I hope he gets into some game action soon because I, that, that's the next thing. Like it's good yeah. to see him taking live B taking BP, uh, playing catch, doing all these baseball activities. It's not like he's not doing anything at all. Uh, but would love to see him be able to get into some games before the end of the spring, obviously. Yeah. yeah. No, I, that, and that's what I've been saying is like until, especially when they're describing it as mild and they're optimistic and don't, mm. you know, all this stuff. And that's why I'm, that's why I keep saying like, okay, if this is how they're going to describe it. This is what I'm going to go off of. Right. Sure. Like I'm not going to sit here and be like, okay, no, they're wrong. He's definitely not going to be on opening day roster. Right. <laughs> Ten foil hat theories. Yeah. Man. So I'm like, <laughs> no, this is what they're saying. We're going to go off it. Are they maybe, hi- could, could they maybe be hiding something? Sure. sure. But I'm going to go off what they are saying. So, but hearing Hap talk that he was uh, playing catch yesterday or today or whatever it was, doing some things. So like, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think you have to worry about it and t- until you get closer to opening day and he's not ready. Then yeah. I don't think you have to worry about it for, for right now. We did uh it was funny. Uh, Vanilla chill. I think we have him in the chat right now. Pose the hypothetical. Um, yesterday at like four in the morning and I was awake. Oh. Yeah, I was awake and in the discord. Um, at four in the morning, three like 30 in the morning, something like that. Wow. But I was, I was just still awake. Um, <laughs> I don't sleep. But he, you were on, you were in the Discord at four thirty in the morning. Yeah, well, three thirty in the morning. More, like, it was before three. I do an emergency po- or we do an emergency podcast at two a.m. when Bellinger signs, and now when nothing's happening, Ryan's in the Discord at three thirty in the morning last yeah. night. Well, I mean, be, so I saw because the reason that why is I was kind of going through it, and he made a hypothetical talking about you know Owen Casey, yeah, and if he just has an awesome year and really forces the issue, like there. You know, it was a hypothetical of like, and if Hap is having the same season that he had last year, you know, going into the All Star break or whatever, like, is he the guy you move on from? Is that and and I had the I would I would like to ask to hear your opinions. Like, is if if Hap is having the same year he had last year, mm-hmm. and but Owen Casey is destroying minor league baseball, ready for the call up, but needs an outfield spot, are you moving on from Ian Hap? Well, he has no trade clause. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's fair, but like if you like that's in the hypothetical, you could in the hypothetical, you could. Sure, but like, but like, but that's the thing. I don't, I don't my, think he's going to take it. My my thing was even if you could, if you're having, if you're having the same season that he had last year, if you look at the numbers, mm-hmm. you know, basically the same season he had when he was an All Star in 20, 2022, in other ways better than he was in twenty twenty two. You're talking about a guy with a one eighteen WRC plus. Um, Walk rates and on base percentages way above league average. Strikeout rate right around league average. ISO and slugging uh, solidly above league average. So you're talking about a really good hitter. Mm-hmm. There's no even if like you know even no trade clause right. No trade clause. You can send him wherever. If you're at the All Star break, like I'm not moving on from that guy. No, I'm not moving on from that guy. Um, to for especially when you're talking about for a rookie who doesn't have it. I mean, he's had a few, obviously, at bats in spring training and stuff against major league pitching, but like just no yeah. regular season major it's, league experience, and and, and add in the fact that yeah. the Cubs are probably in a playoff race at that point in time. Sure. Like that is, it's, that, that's just not a move that I would make, and I could see making, especially if he's having that same season that he had last year. I can see him coming up and be a DH. Yeah, right? like sure. if if Bush isn't performming, or if Morel if he's forcing the issue for back, sure. Or, I mean, there's there's tons of scenarios. Yeah. It's not like, and this is going to, I'm going to throw out some real names out here for you, some real Cubs legends here for you guys. It's not like, uh, you know, Chris Bryant being blocked by Luis Valbuena, RIP in peace. It's not like Chris Bryant being blocked by Mike Ult, all right? Like, like <laughs> those guys were playing third base before he got the call up in 2015. Mm-hmm. Ian Happ is a good player. He has been at least a three and a half war yeah. each of the last two seasons. He led the team in on base percentage last year. Okay. We're not talking about a like a sub level replacement level player, right? Like we're talking about a guy who has a ton of experience, is still young, 
and has found a way to be consistent the last two yeah. years. Well, and the other thing I didn't mention is he is just consistently healthy. Right. Like he's always too. out there. And yeah. I again, the fact that he gets on base is a huge deal. All right. Again, the best on base percentage on the team last season. Oh, that again, this is 25 in baseball last season. Credit to him. Again, Owen Casey, I'm high on. I think we're all high on them. I'm not taking anything away from Owen Casey. What what the right move for this would be is having both of them on the team. <laughs> and yeah. you can utilize the DH, man. Like I when I, I think I think it's a different question though, like if you're in haps like walk year or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If if it's that scenario, sure. But if we're in this given scenario that you've presented to us, Ryan, it's like at the midway this point of the season. Scenario, yeah. This is vanilla chills scenario at the middle of the year, all star break, something like right before the deadline, whatever. Right? The to me, the team is better with both of them on the team than just one of them. And again, you don't know what Owen Casey's gonna be right away. We just gotta stop looking at how these prospects can be anything like those guys from the twenty sixteen core, man. Just that what th what happened back then was incredible and like I'll yes. cherish it forever mm -hmm. and I'll tell my grandkids and their grandkids about it if I'm still alive but like you you have to have an insurance all right yeah. and Ian Happ has been a good baseball player consistently for the last two years so yeah. that's how I ride no I uh yeah I think the conclusion we ended up coming to probably about like 4 30 in the morning was uh that <laughs> the ideal scenario for the Cubs is that all these guys just have great years and you have too many miles to feed and not enough ABs. Like that's mm -hmm. that is the great that is a scenario the Cubs are hoping for. That yeah. Owen Casey's playing so well, but you still can't find room for him because everyone else is playing so well. Sure. Now, again, I'm uh, I'm someone who wants to see a lot of these young guys play, man. Like that's for sure, right? But uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how Craig Council figures this out, especially with Killian now probably going on that IL. And that might open up a – I would assume that's how they open up a 40-man yeah, spot. Yeah, 60-day. And so who will they put on there? I'm intrigued to find out. My, my guess is a pitcher. My guess yeah. is a pitcher. I don't, I don't like – Pitcher for pitcher. Yeah, well, like when Matt Shaw and Owen Casey are ready – because they don't need to be up on the 40-man this year, I don't believe. I don't think Owen Casey needs to be on the 40-man this year. But, like, they don't need to be on the 40-man right now. So when they are ready, it's really not that hard to – open to open a 40 man spot like they, there there are ways to be able to open it for one of those guys when they are ready mm -hmm. but right now i think they want i think they would value just having another potential you know uh, optionable pitcher to be having the having the 40 man be in the minor leagues and be able to bring him up and down whenever whenever it's needed i think that's my gut would be that they're <coughs> the play, if they do no, end up no. putting killian on the 60 day <laughs> Which I is likely hold it in anymore. Sorry. Then my plan, I would think their plan is when they should they eventually put Killian on the sixty day. They'd probably my gut would tell me they'd probably add another pitcher to it. I don't know who. Um, Jordan and, Montgomery. And it, yeah, well, there you go. They can go and sign him. Uh, That's what all the people are fill, putting their tinfoil hat theories yeah. on. Fill the yeah. fill the starting yeah. pitching depth. That, right. The, yeah. the the hole in the starting pitching depth that Caleb Killian um, he's behind for now. Um, um, but yeah, that's that would be my gut feeling as a pitcher for sure. Uh, one last thing before we go to these ad breaks, uh, the Cubs like released, or I guess all across baseball, they released, uh, each team released like their spring breakout roster. Um, mm -hmm. it's like a tournament. I don't really know too much about like the whole tournament itself. I know it was new. It's that new. Came. Yeah. It's new for the first time. Um, the it's only like notable, a game, right? It's yeah, like a yeah, bunch of yeah. yeah, and the only notable thing I took away from it is that PCA and Michael Bush are not on it. Um, and I think that's mainly because they're just battling for spots on the major league roster. I think that's what Jordan Bastian said in the MLB.com article about it. Yeah, it would make sense just because right. it's what? It's March 15th. Mm -hmm. um, the important is. Yeah. 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 There, there's but, guys that, like I, you said, PCA and Bush. Bush, Mervis, like those kind of guys that may still be in the mix aren't on the roster. And it, because it's so close to opening day, focus yeah. on whatever you need to do day to day. Like, Stay in the swing of things versus guys that are like, okay, these guys are really, really good prospects. Don't really have a shot to make the open day roster, but mm -hmm. let's put them in this game, show off what they got, see how they stack up against some of the other best prospects in baseball. Probably yeah. have a, But the a roster the it. Cubs are putting out there, man, oh, yeah, it's, it, it makes you move your eyebrows a little bit. It makes you excited about the future, right? So 
I think they play the White Sox. The White yeah, Sox, they do. I believe. Yeah, on the fourteenth, right? The fifteenth. 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 Yeah. So next Friday. Next Friday. Yeah. I can't wait. The roster is. I mean, yeah, we're talking about Kate Horton, Michael Arias, who just got put mm. on the forty man this off season. Yep. Um, Moises Basteros, who you talk about all the time, who 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 may be. We'll see one of the catchers of the future for the Cubs. Matt Shaw, James Triantos, Jefferson Rojas, mm-hmm. who we talk, actually talked about yesterday, I think it was. We were talking about the new prospect list. He's like 18 years old, yep. number 10 prospect in the system. I was gushing about him in my yeah. TikTok live the other night. And obviously you have Owen Casey, at Kevin O'Contra. At 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, we'll and just uh, go with that's that. That's what our Discord should say. We're here at 4.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of us. <laughs> It'll be fun. Maybe you know, Rich is in the chat right now. I'm sure Rich will be there checking out the prospects and can give us a uh, yeah a detailed update on what what. what we and maybe he, he'll just let us use some of his photos to post on social media too. <laughs> Credit to Rich. Credit to Rich. Um. All right, stuck. Well, uh, I hope you feel better, and I hope I see you on Monday here in studio. Me too. Me too. Me too. And also. Next week, I think Jared is going out to Arizona, right? That yes. Point? Yes. 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 I did hear about that. Yes. Or is that next week? Well, that'll be nice. Yeah. yeah. So Jared will be out there and can maybe he can can call in and with some updates for us. So. That's right. Nice. Don't forget to tell everybody about you know the 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 uh, season guide you wrote up. You know. Oh yeah, I don't oh, think yeah. I've mentioned it yet. We haven't mentioned it. <laughs> In today's show, at least. Is that see? This well, is this is why Luke, you you're better at hosting than me. I was going to bring it up. But You'll we were going to bring it up. I was going to bring You'll it up. Fine. I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go watch the Shaw interview from the living room. There you go. Okay. All right. We'll we'll you'll be here in spirit. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. That's the stuck. famous. The famous. Luke's, the famous. At, at least four time Emmy winning. Yeah. Luke Stuckmeyer. Luke Stuckmeyer. At Meyer. least at minimum. Yeah. yeah. You know. You know. While he's watching this, watching us do the Shaw interview, he's also going to be thinking about new flooring. You will be thinking about new flooring. You know why? Because you'll be thinking about Empire. With Empire today, you get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. Oh, you put him back on. <laughs> he's that, rubbing his freaking Emmy, man. He's got the Emmy. He's got the Emmy. Nothing goes better with uh, an Emmy trophy than Empire. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they have copycats, but Empire can't be beaten. On quality, service, speed. So competitors advertise low quality products that Empire simply won't carry. Empire won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does that is putting flooring in your home that they wouldn't put in theirs. They keep shopping for floors simple with curated product selection. Empire's philosophy is to help you find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. What they leave out of their selection is as important as what they put in. Empire's product team exhaustively combs through thousands of product samples each year to find the perfect styles. Uh, Their visual floor designer is a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. It's easy. Just snap a picture and instantly see how new floors will look in your room. Shopping for floors at a big, big box store can be frustrating. You might talk to someone today who was working in plumbing yesterday. Could even be me. Um, flooring is all Empire Today does. They live and breathe flooring, so you can be confident you're getting honest, upfront advice. They pride themselves on their convenient shop at home service. They help customers shop for floors where they use their floors so they can see exactly what their new floors will look like in the home's lighting and decor so they can make an informed decision. Service they service their own warranties. If an issue does arise, just call Empire. They'll service the warranty themselves. You won't have to track down a manufacturer's phone number. So go and schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners, get this, Cody. Get this, Cody. Everyone Mm. in the chat, anyone listening on the podcast, listen up. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code CHGO. $350 off when you use the promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash CHGO for details. I like Kybert's uh, chats. He's doing the jingle. Five eight eight two three hundred Empire today. today. God bless. Go. Uh, all right, listen up, guys. And the next big thing it's Prize Picks. Prize Picks. Nothing is, goes better with flooring. I know. You could be looking at flooring and making your Prize Picks like line up all at the same time. It's it's 
you know, with the with to, with today's technology, it's it's that easy. It, it's that fun. Uh, I hope Luke Stuckmeyer can figure it out. I know how bad he is with technology, but maybe I can sit down and help him one day. Anyway, Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy platform, daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. If it's it's just you against the numbers, instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Conference tournament action started today. I placed bets on a bunch of teenagers and young adults playing basketball that started at 1130 this morning. Oh my goodness, this is March, all right? This is March. You can do it all. You can you can bet on stat projections for all these kids and young adults on prize picks, all right? The biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer to be part of the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Um, the, you know, you could, you test, I test my skills on prize picks this season, the most exciting way in daily fantasy sports, all right? Quite literally, especially in March. This is what I live for. This is what I dream about, all right? That this and hit parlays. March. Yeah, this is March. I got March Madness and then hit parlays for 162 games, all right? I can't, I, I, I can't wait. And I know I'm calling them – they're not parlays. They're, it, it, they're, a, they're a entries, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, again, that's – one of the cool things I really do love about Price Picks, though, is that on Tuesdays – I know today's Thursday, but Tuesday's right around the corner. They offer – 25% up to 25% boost discounts on player projections every Tuesday. All right. It's a weekly promotion that they do and they have other promotions. All right. Sometimes they just have like a particular player and it's like, Oh, just to score one basket. It's kind of like a little freebie that they give to you to add on to your price picks entry. All right. There's no other daily fantasy app that does that. It, it, it's incredible. All right. So go to pricepicks.com slash CHGO and use code. CHGO for your first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO. All right, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. Um, so yesterday we talked ad nauseum about Christopher Morell and his defense at third base. And I'm going to use this to kind of lead into this Matt Shaw conversation that Ryan mm-hmm. had. Um, but Craig Council was asked – about Christopher Morrell after the game, obviously. Um, and I put this, we put this up on our Instagram account. You should go follow us at uh, CHGO underscore Cubs on Instagram. Um, this is not something where the right, the right, uh, the right graphic from Sarah this time. Yeah, the right graphic <laughs> yeah, this time. Credit go. to Sarah. All right. <laughs> Credit to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Craig Council said this is not something we're assessing over six weeks either. This is something to assess over a long period of time to just keep getting better. And we've kind of talked about this at, anyway about how like the, the third yeah. base job isn't something that's going to be decided on March, you know, right before March 28th when they open up in Texas. Um, yeah. That's been his message for right. pretty much since we found out that he was, that they're planning on having mm-hmm. Morel take them, right. take most of his reps at third base for spring. Like right. that's just kind of been his message anyway. Right. But Matt Shaw is knocking on the door, man. Like, as much as I want to see Morrell have success at third base, Matt Shaw has not that he hadn't already impressed me last year with his skyrocketing through the minors uh, from the moment he got drafted, but he has impressed me a lot with the bat and not just at third base, but all across the field too, because they played him at second some days as well. I think they might they might have played him at short mm-hmm. one or two times as well. Like he just he can play the infield, man, and he's coming. I don't know when he is going to be on this roster in 2024, but he is going to make the Cubs better in 2024 at some point. And the it seems whole, that way. The pro yeah, it seems that way. You can't always predict it, and yeah, you know, I I hope I'm right about this, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I have not listened to this interview with that you had with him yet. So I'm excited to listen to this, but the process of getting to him at that point is something that I'm excited to, or I'm, I'm intrigued to watch play out because obviously the Cubs had issues with third base last year, at least offensively. Mm -hmm. Um, Now it might be the reverse with the defense because it could be a mixture of Madrigal and Morrell at third. 
uh, maybe some wisdom as well. And obviously, two of those three are liabilities defensively. Let's just be real about it. Master Boney might also. Even Master Boney, my yeah. guy, Master Boney. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot him. <laughs> um, so, again, I, I'm intrigued to see how Matt Shaw eventually gets this roster and takes over third base, I hope. But yeah. we got to get there. And, it, he, like, that, I'm, I'm interested to see how the rest of his spring plays out. Yeah. And yeah, so I have, we have the interview coming. I don't, I haven't seen Barb yet today, but I did I not. I've been wondering where Barb is. Barb, I didn't need a phone book for this one. I didn't need a phone book. We, the, the heights matched up a lot more, a lot better between mm-hmm. me and Matt Shaw on this one. All right. Um, credit to Ryan for getting this done. Big of me to say. Let's go. All right, Ryan Herrera of CHGO Cubs. I'm joined here with one of the Cubs' top prospects, last year's first-round draft pick, Matt Shaw. Matt, how are we doing today? Good, good. How are you? Very good, very good. Thanks for asking. So uh, my first question is obviously we're here at spring training. Uh, your first spring training with the Cubs, what has it been like for you so far? Uh, I mean, everything you could ask for. You know, I mean, we do a lot of team stuff right now, so just kind of working through that. But, you know, just good to be around the guys, start to kind of, Make some friends, get to know my teammates, you know, and, um, you know, definitely take some time, but uh, it's good to be around them now. You know, there's a lot of new faces for me just being a little newer. Um, so, you know, just really listening and kind of sitting in the background and seeing what I can pick up. Um, but hopefully, you know, as, as we end the spring training, start to kind of build some more relationships, get to know some guys a little more. Yeah, and what's it been like being around the vets? Obviously, the guys that have done it at the major leagues for years and years, however long they've been in the major leagues, being around them, getting to pick their brand, getting to see them work, what's it been like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, vets are vets. You know, at the end of the day, like, the way a vet approaches his business and the way, you know, a young guy like me, you know, they're going to just, they know exactly who they are. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, you know, so stuff that I'm still figuring out, you know, stuff that, is going to take me some time, you know, going through it to figure out exactly who I am and what I need to do. And, you know, they know themselves so well, you know, and I think they have just that aura and that confidence about them from knowing themselves that you just know they're a veteran. You know, they just, they walk like one, they talk like one, and they definitely play like one. I want to take you back a year ago. You are you would be playing at Maryland right now? Like, what, do you guys have already started games at this point in the year? Yeah, last weekend was the first weekend of the year. So there you go. So would you have imagined that by the end of the baseball season, you would be in double A, playing yeah, playing with double A guys, even though you'd started the, you started the year in Maryland in college? Yeah, I mean, I, I was sure hoping that I would be. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, it just – Obviously, kind of everything happens for a reason, and whoever I ended up, I ended up. But you know, I just I wanted the opportunity, you know, to go play and and have people that are willing to move you up. You know, it's not always the case. So, you know, for me, it was just go play, enjoy it, and uh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And uh, so far, it's been a dream come true. Yeah. So, what's that? What was that? Or what was that like? Again, going from Maryland, you go to high. You, you come here for what three or so games right yeah. after the draft. Then you go up to high A for twenty or so games, and then you end the season to fifteen games in Double A. Just the quickness with which you you kind of went through the system. I know when you got drafted, we kind of talked about that all of us. Uh, and you said that you know maybe if that's what they want to do with you, you're up for it, right? They want to move you through a system pretty quickly. So what was it like actually experience that? Yeah, I mean obviously baseball wise, you know baseball is always such a such a challenge, such a you know. It is what you bring to it, um, you know. So a lot of preparation, obviously, going from different city, different place, different pitchers, high A, double A. You, know, you just get such a mix of everything you can possibly imagine as a hitter. Um, but definitely, like socially, you know, getting to know so many guys in such a brief amount of time um, it can be hard. You know, it's just like there's so many new faces. They've been, you know, they grinded through that season together. You know, so they have that bond, which I I didn't yet. You know, so. Um, obviously a lot of really great guys that made it a lot easier for me Um, but I look forward to getting that whole year where I can get to know these guys you know actually build some really strong relationships where you know I can look around the room and have my best friends and and have all these guys that I know so well and I think that just helps you play better too because you just feel comfortable you know know you're in it together and I think that's a big part of like what I'm looking forward to in the season is is having those relationships whereas you know two different places in, in two months it's just it's hard to build those relationships that fast was there anything when you joined the cubs and and got to understand the system anything that surprised you or stood out about the way they run things not really no honestly it's been pretty smooth sailing um you know i think they do a good job of of being there if you need them and also not being there if you don't you know what i'm saying so like you know there's definitely a time and a place for for coaching and everybody needs it but there's also time and place to just play you know and i think that's an important part of 
you know, professional baseball coaching is letting people do their thing, letting them figure out who they are, and then letting them kind of transition that into the baseball field. And so for you, I think one of the things that obviously allowed you to move up levels is how well you hit kind of going up the system. Um, getting to face minor league pitching a little bit, you know, a step up maybe from, uh, from college, just getting that experience, what was that like? Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's all you can ask for, you know, seeing more pitches, seeing more pitchers, seeing different arm slots, you know, seeing more cutters, you know, there's a lot of, a lot you learn, but, you know, you learn quick, you know, you see it, you start to develop a plan, um, you know, and you start to kind of put guys in categories of how I want to attack this guy when I'm hitting, and, um, you know, things start to settle down, they start to make a little more sense, you start to, you know, you don't have to dig so deep into preparation, you can say, okay, I know, you know, the type of ball this guy's throwing, and I know what I have to do with that, great you know it's not over complicated and you can just go and run off your plan and defensively I know you told us at the Cubs convention around 99 percent maybe of your reps this offseason were at third base what what kind of went into that decision why why so much work at third base for you yeah I mean honestly third is definitely one of the positions I played the least um, so that was important but you know for me it's you know being able to play every position become extremely comfortable at third you know you just want to be prepared for that day comes when your name is called that you can you know you're completely confident in your abilities and in all the positions in the infield so you know taking a lot of reps at third has been has been awesome um you know it's taught me a lot of a lot about playing second a lot about playing short as well um so i'm just kind of really happy how it all worked out and when you look at second and short obviously nico horner and dansby swanson are that the Cubs, they're kind of locked in for the Cubs right. right now. But what have you learned from them, again, being around them in camp right now, what, from those two, whether it's watching them or talking to them in the clubhouse, just what have you learned from those two guys? Yeah, let me come back to you with that after spring training. I'll give you a better answer. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you learn so much, and you, and you just kind of watch, and you start to kind of mimic a little bit of what they do. Um, but that takes time, you know, to really get to know them, why they click, like mm-hmm. what makes them do everything, you know, very great routines and, and very consistent, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, you want to you want to figure out, you know, the deeper stuff, the more important stuff, you know, what has made them so successful, you know, being consistent. And, and that's great. And they are, you know, so consistent human beings. And, and it's phenomenal. You know, but but over a long period of time, you know, Dansby being so many years in the league mm-hmm. and, and Nico being so successful on defense and offense, like what, you know, what is that all about? And, and what is he even, you know, what is he thinking at the play? What is he thinking in the field? You know, how he goes about his business off the field, too. You know, all that stuff is very interesting and stuff that takes time to kind of know the player now for you there you know there are some people out there that think you could maybe make your major league debut this season in the 2024 season have you had any conversations with front office coaches about the possibilities ahead of you or are you kind of just taking it day by day yeah so you know i people ask the question a lot about the front office thing and you really don't have many conversations with the front office you know i don't know maybe dansby and nico do um but you know they're not coming and saying hey matt you know you, you might make your big league debut this year you know so you know it's more just being prepared doing everything you can do so when that moment comes you're ready you know if it's this year if it's next year you know it whenever it may be you know you just got to be ready you know ready for it ready I think emotionally you know for everything that goes along with making your debut you know Mm -hmm. the media the fans the environment is such a big difference from the minor leagues you know so I think just being kind of a consistent human being so when you get to that moment you know, you can kind of calm your emotions and, and enjoy it. And going into the season, obviously a few more weeks of spring is remaining. Uh, depending on where you start, we don't know that yet. But, you know, what are kind of your goals for moving forward right now? What are your goals maybe towards the end of spring training, your goals for the season for you individually? Yeah, uh, my goal is to enjoy it. Uh, my other goal is, you know, no matter what happens, to be able to let go and, and understand that it, it happens for a reason. Um, I, I wouldn't say I have any, you know, goals. Oh, I want to. I need to make the big leagues in two weeks, or you know, I need to hit a 40 home runs, whatever. You know, I think just kind of being a a goal of being a, you know, a good fiance to to Danielle, my fiance, being a good friend, being a good family member. I think all that stuff kind of makes it a lot easier to say, hey, you know, baseball. As much as I put my heart and soul into the game, it is just a game. You know, so being able to separate that, so you know, when I have a bad day, it doesn't affect you know the rest of my day and then that day doesn't affect the next day you know so I think that my biggest goal is really just enjoying it staying positive and uh, figuring out how to grind through 140 160 games all right we got one more for you 
you gotten to spend a little bit of time in Chicago since you got drafted. Have you found have you found any mm-hmm. food spot that you really love? Food any spot. food spot you never knew about? You tried it and you're like, this is great. Gosh, uh, it so, could be as basic as as uh, yeah. a tourist would say or whatever you'd so like. So I actually didn't get to eat this place in Chicago, but I got to eat it in Arizona. It's Maple and Ash, the steakhouse. Okay. okay. And I absolutely love the steak in Arizona, and I'm sure. That I went to Chicago, I'd have a very similar experience, <laughs> but um, I haven't gotten the chance to go out and about that much, so that would have to be my answer. All right, well, if you ever need some food spots, I got you. I um, Matt, thanks for joining us for CHGO Cubs. I'm Ryan Herrera. We'll see you later. You know what goes well with what he went to eat? You know, would be a good Blue Moon. <laughs> blue Moon. <laughs> uh, we talk about it all the time. Blue Moon goes well with anything, especially. You get a blue moon, you get a nice chilled glass, oh. throw a throw an orange slice in there. Oh, brother, uh, but you don't even yes. need that. We got we got blue moon in the fridge right now, and we can go crack one right now if you really want to. It'd be just as good. Yeah. There you go. Great sound effect. There you go. Um, but yeah, blue moon made brighter. Get blue moon delivered and see delivery options by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. We're telling you, Blue Moon, great. Blue Moon got us through the the Arizona trip. Yeah, it really did. It got me through that. We had some late nights and some early mornings. Blue Moon helped me get through each day. (laughs) All right. Uh, There you go. You know, what else goes good with a blue moon? Well, if you're not a diehard, you can become a diehard and enjoy a blue moon while you're setting yourself up with it. While you're getting in, while you're jumping into Discord and leaving, uh, asking the important questions like Vanilla Chill did at 3.30 in the morning. Um, yeah, or this morning we were talking about me, my fraternity life at, in college. <laughs> this yeah, morning, there you go. Like, you don't know what's going to happen in the Discord, mm. but it's a great community. It is. Of, of people that you only get mm-hmm. access to. If you become a CHO diehard, right? Whether you're a Cubs fan or you know the Bears, you know I know we the Bears they're all I, they're probably live right now with the Jalen Johnson news or whatever. But if you're just a Chicago sports fan in general, it's a great Discord channels for each team. People go in, vent when the teams piss them off, celebrate when the teams make us feel like uh, feel like we can you know run through a brick wall. Uh, the Discord's great. You also get twenty percent off. Uh, merch like this this hoodie like his sweatshirt um this hat that i'm wearing um 20 off of events also i forgot to mention the chicago collection it's out it came out on monday again this pizza hoodie is incredible man like i need it like i need oxygen yeah All if right? you want to get that same patty's uh, uh t-shirt yes you better get it fast because better get it fast i'm telling you all right yeah. so all the merch the events like i said Sarah brought it up because she's so good at her job. We have our three takeovers this this uh, year, one against the Sox on June 4th. Frosting our out. road trip to Milwaukee on June 29th. Tailgating. Yeah, where we'll probably be tailgating. And then, of course, September 6th when the Yankees come to town, Anthony which means it's Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo's making his return to Wrigley for the first time. It's the very first game of the series. So we'll all be there to see the tribute video, and you'll all be there to watch me cry. All right? <laughs> so if the, if you would just want to watch me cry, you can come to that event. Okay? And, be, and diehards can get 20% off. 20% yeah. off if you're a diehard. And diehards right? also get access to my uh, season guide put oh, out earlier yes. this week. Yes. Uh, all the players in the 40-man 2023 recaps, 2024 previews for all of them going through it. So anyone you have some questions about, you go in there, you get access to it if you're a diehard. Mm-hmm. And more are on the way. Like I've, I've mentioned a couple times this week, some of the spring training invites that we haven't that we don't have on there, going to go on there soon. Any of the top prospects that aren't on the 40-man roster, going on there soon. Some other guys that you just maybe have never heard about or you're really interested in, going to go on there soon. So yeah. get access to it, become a diehard, and make sure – yeah, become a diehard to make sure you get access to it. Right. You don't want to miss out. Right. Jim asks in the chat, is Discord an app? It is. But you can also use it on your desktop, which I feel like Luke Stuckmeyer would probably be able to understand it more if he just used it on his desktop. So it can be used in both ways. Um, anyway, Matt Shaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, impressive. I, the way he talks, I, I, there's something about it. Just That's my, my two cents from it to start is the way that he talks – Seems like a very confident fella, a guy who's just trying to take in the moment in his first spring training with the Cubs, not trying to let the hype and all of that like surround him. He's just out there doing his thing. Uh, I like that. 
seems pretty humbled. And for someone who was taken the first round of the MLB draft, had a lot of success in college, um, you know, trying to learn from guys like Dansby and Nico uh, as well. It's impressive to me, whether whether he's just talking or not. I'd rather hear this than, I guess, the reverse of that. Yeah, no, I I agree. Like, just the way he talks is very um, confident, but not st- stressing, I guess mm-hmm. maybe is the right way to put it. Like, he, he he's confident in his abilities. I'm sure he's confident that he can play to a level where he plays himself onto the big league roster at some point this year, right? But he's not – doesn't seem to me like he's worried about that. Like, he's worried about – when he's going to make his big league debut, when he's going to come up to the Cubs and where, where he's going to play or anything like that, right? Like we talked about it. He, he talked about it in the interview uh, about just getting work at third base, not solely because it was it's an open position at this point, but just because he wanted, you know, wanted to get more work at, at a place he just didn't have a whole lot of experience going back to time in college or even prior, right? So, sure. Um, yeah, with Matt Shaw, he, he has. A, it seems like he has a really, really good head on his shoulders, um, he's a great baseball player, right? Like I, that's—I think that's the question. What is, what is the ceiling for this guy? Yeah, I, I don't know, like a particular player to compare him to or anything. But I—I'll say this: that I think he has the potential to be better than Nico Horner. Um, and I think the reason being is even—and I know I don't take the results too seriously, but like some of the balls he's driven this mm-hmm. spring. He's hitting the ball all over the place in, in the minors last year when he got drafted. I still can't get that one home run he get he hit against Iowa in college that went God knows how far. Uh, that was like the main highlight I remember seeing whenever the Cubs drafted him. I, I just think that there's more – there's a higher ceiling offensively for him. Yeah. Nico – and this is not to take anything away from Nico. Nico is a great defensive player. He's a great hitter. I mean, he was like number five or number six in hits in baseball last year. But I think that there's more potential slug for Matt Shaw than there was than there is for Nico. I think Shaw can be a 20-plus homer or more down the line. I don't know what kind of player that I want to compare him to, but I think there's more offensive potential out of him than Nico. That's fair. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I haven't – like deep dove into Nico's minor league numbers, and obviously he didn't have a whole lot of them because yeah. he came up so fast. Right. Um, but I mean, with Shaw, you just you look at him, um, you see the way he exploded last season in two months. Right, two months after getting drafted, he ends the season in Double A, and having been up there for a couple weeks at that point. Right. So sure. Um, he seemed like just one of the more polished players to come out of that draft. Uh, I know you know being in college and ha- just having a little bit more experience against. Uh, higher level pitching than what most, you know, guys that sign out of high school or some of the international players. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little, maybe a little bit better competition at the college level. Um, so, but he seemed like one of the most polished hitters coming out of it, right? He won. Uh, I don't remember what exactly the award was, but he won the award for uh, best shortstop in the country. I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like defensively with the bat, like he he seemed like a, um, you know. A lot of the package that you want out of a player he had already. And I don't know that he's going to be or that he has the highest ceiling for Mm -hmm. anyone that's going to come out of that draft. But just the trajectory he's on looks like a guy who can be a very good contributor to this ball club. I don't want to put all-star expectation on it, right? Mm Because it's hard to make an all-star team. Nico hasn't even made an all-star team yet, and he's been pretty good for the Cubs for the last few years. Right. Um, I know that was my bold prediction that he would make the all-star team, but that's a different story. Right. Um, So, But being an all-star is hard. And, you know, Dansby didn't make an all-star two two years ago, and he's 30 now. So, Mm -hmm. uh, But Matt Shaw, uh, he seems like a guy who has the right mindset, the right mentality, has the skills defensively, has a good bat, um, to be a really solid contributor for this ball club in the near future and, and beyond. So yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see if he comes up at all this season. I think, again, when we look at his trajectory, it feels like he has a shot as long as he kind of keeps it up. Mm-hmm. But that, you know, depending on what – I think that depends on what the other guys on the active roster are doing. I sure. think it depends, obviously, on what he's able to do in the minor leagues. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's – he seems to be on a very good trajectory to be helping this ball club sooner than later. Um, and actually being a contributor versus just a guy that's kind of versus kind of how we saw some guys uh, in September last year. I you know, that was a different situation, right? Mm-hmm. Guys that are debuting in September, no major league experience. 
it's a little yeah. a little harder to want to throw them right into the fire at points. Sure. Yeah. But like for Shaw, depending on when he does come up, if if it is the season, could be in a position where he's helping them and getting more opportunities and just uh, having a maybe a larger role than some of those guys had. Yeah, I mean. I don't. I don't want to put high expectations on him either. I. I am falling for a little bit of the hype, though. That's for sure. I, I'll openly admit that. I mean, the, there's a lot of hype, and yeah. so far in his pro career, he's backed it up. Yeah. Like every stop, every step Absolutely. of the way, he's backed it up so far. So I mean, again, like just drafted last year, last like summer. It hasn't even been a year, and yeah. like imagine if he gets called up in like June, you know, before the draft. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, what Schwarber was. Just about a year after he yeah. got drafted, type yeah. stuff, right? Like maybe right. maybe like thirteen months or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. So like, I, again, like it would be fun to see, um, but I I just think the sky is kind of the limit for him in the position that he plays. Um, I do th- find it kind of hilarious um, the people thinking, oh, if he's great, like does that mean they might trade Nico or something? <laughs> I, I, like I don't know, man. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. The Cubs got Nico on such a great deal. They gave him that contract extension last year, which I know basically just bought out the arbitration years. But like this is not to take anything from Nico Horner, take anything away from him at all. Like he's a gold glove second baseman. He's uh, like multiple players have basically said he's turned into a, a leader on the team. He's – I think – Hint like Nico Swanson and Shaw in that infield at the end of the season. I think the Cubs could be a playoff team with those three there, and um, if if he if he you know excels the way that I think we all think he can. Obviously, he's got to go out there and prove it. And he's got to mm-hmm. get the opportunity, and you know we'll see how things. As as you have said to me many times, Ryan, and as the people uh, in the industry and Jed Hoyer and all of them have said. Baseball always seems to find a way to figure itself out. So, who knows? Maybe we see Shaw earlier because of an unfortunate injury that I'm not trying to manifest whatsoever. Maybe we see him because he kills it in AAA or wherever they put him and they just say it's time. And maybe maybe some 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 guys just aren't excelling in their role, you know, like whether it's Magical, Master Boney, whoever, and the the Cubs want to have better depth on the bench, and you know they, you know you're getting good production out of everyone on the infield, but they they're not getting anything out of some of these other guys, and maybe he comes up and plays a smaller role, just to start his career, right? I don't know. All I know is that the future is bright with Matt Shaw on this roster, man. Yeah, so I, I look forward to it. But before we leave, Mike Taylor, uh, that Horner is still injury prone. People forget that. I don't – no, I wouldn't Not say anymore. that anymore. I mean, he played 150 games last year. The year before, I played 135. And you think about two weeks of that about was taken from him by – An umpire by that an umpire, ran into him. Right? Yeah. Like, so, like, I wouldn't say he's injury prone yeah. uh, myself anymore. I, I but, Like, that's, like, definitely something that followed yeah. Horner prior to For sure, the last yeah. couple of seasons. But I think the last two yeah. years you look at it as, like, he's – he's kind of moved past that narrative, right? Like, yeah. injuries may still happen, but as far as being injury prone, the narrative – I don't think that follows Nico anymore. That said, though, would would like to see Nico and Dansby get a little bit more rest this year, especially Swanson, which is something that I think we all would feel really good about, and maybe that does help Matt Shaw get an opportunity. We'll see. Um, okay, that's the show. Uh, Corey and Brennan tomorrow, and we'll be back Corey Monday. Uh, you know, maybe if the Cubs mess around and sign Jordan Montgomery, we'll do an emergency podcast this weekend. You know, maybe I'm just trying to put it out there, perhaps. Because now that if Killian's going on the IL, that opens up a 40-man spot. Just let a guy dream, Ryan. Just let a guy dream. Little tin foil hat theory, okay? Just let a guy dream. Okay. okay. Uh, anyway. I'll let you dream. 21 days until opening day. Sammy Sosa days until uh, opening day. Junior Lake days until opening day. Cubs legend. We got to laugh more there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, again, Corey and Brennan tomorrow. We'll be back on Monday. And, yeah, do you have anything? Am I missing anything? I think we're good. All right. Thanks for checking out CHO Cubs podcast. See you next week. Goodbye. We all silly like the mayor. 